Hey guys, we're checking out the Bethang C07.UART, this display right here, and it's on a Surface 604 Rook. I wanna point out that this particular battery does have a USB port built into the side, and I feel like I've seen this display somewhere with a USB port, but I can't really confirm that. This bike comes with a two amp charger, relatively compact and lightweight. Got the charging port on the side of the battery pack. Now let's get into the display. In order to boot it up, all you have to do is hold that power button for a couple seconds comes to life quickly. This display is not removable, but I like how big it is. It's just easy to read. It's right there in the center. It's up high in the center of the handlebars, and it does swivel really easily as long as you don't over tighten those little bolts right there. So the primary readouts are the battery level indicator. I love that it has 10 dots, 10% 10 increments versus just like five. Speed, it's in miles per hour right now, but we're gonna change that later. And then levels of assist at the bottom. This particular bike boots up in assist level one. So the torque sensing cadence sensor, which is right here at the bottom bracket, that's active along with the throttle. So we've got a trigger throttle here. Uh, one of the downsides, however, is that the throttle power is limited by the level of assist you're, you're choosing. So that's a bit disappointing because sometimes it's nice to override and, and get full power. This is a variable speed throttle. So the further you push, the more power you, you should get. And that is the case in level five. So let's go all the way up to the highest level of assist. So I can do it gently, just like that, or I can really juice it. So to me, that's kind of a, it's, it's one of the compromises of this setup. And I did ask the company, you know, Surface 604, why not override with the throttle? And they said, we asked Bafang and they wouldn't do it. Um, so I don't know, Bafang, that'd be nice to have a lot of other systems. I think including some Bafang systems do allow you to have full power, you know, yeah, anyway, minor gripe. So you saw me pressing plus and minus to navigate through the different levels of assist. We can go down to zero and then the throttle and pedal assist are not active, but you still have a display panel to look at, which is kind of handy if you're tracking your trip and the lights will work. So this thing has a light sensor built right in. And if I hold and I cover the back of it, uh, the lights will activate. Do you see that? You see the light on the wall right there uh, and the backlighting on the display. So there's a sensitivity menu that you can adjust in the settings and we're about to get there. Uh, the other thing that works in level zero is walk mode. So if I hold the minus key for just a second here, keep holding it, there we go, walk mode. That's really handy if your bike gets a flat tire or maybe you're walking around a park or just with a friend or pushing it up a ramp. There's a lot of situations where you don't necessarily wanna ride or you're not allowed to ride the bike, but this particular bike is like, you know, 56 pounds, it's still pretty heavy. So that's that. The I button down here cycles through the different uh, trip settings. So we've got trip distance right now, total distance, it's like an odometer, max speed, average speed, and then it, it cycles back through. Uh, the levels of assist, they do not go around. So you literally have to press click, click, click all the way up and then click, click, click all the way down. I mentioned the light sensor a minute ago, but you can also override that just by holding the light button here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then you can see the little light icon displays. Okay, so that's the basic sort of standard readouts. But if you wanna go into settings, what you do is double tap I, click, click. And now here we go. So this stands for trip clear. So we can go yes or no. And if we go yes and hit I, that clears like our average speed, our max speed and our trip distance. So it's, it kind of clears all those menus all at once. Uh, the next menu here, it was, well, I, I just got, uh, I got kind of booted out because we took too long. And there is an automatic shutoff on this display too, but you can see now the trip distance is at zero. So let's go double click again. So trip clear, we don't need to do that. We wanna to go to the next menu. This is miles per hour versus kilometers per hour. So we can change those if we want to, the units. And then uh, backlight. So this is sort of, do, do you want the, the backlight to turn on automatically or not? How sensitive is it? So you can get it really sensitive or you can say, no, we don't want to have that automatic sensor on at all. So I'm gonna leave that at three. Okay, and then there's the backlighting of the display itself. So do you wanna make it uh, really, really, really bright. Do you see that? See how it's getting bright? That's kind of nice, but other times, you know, it's, it's you're riding at night and this can be distracting. So it's nice to turn it down. It'd be nice if you could turn that all the way off, but I don't think you can. Automatic time off. So this is how long it waits to shut off. I'm just gonna leave it at five. And then this is maintenance mode. So, you know, it gives you some feedback of when the bike uh, needs to go in for maintenance. I haven't actually used this one a whole lot. I don't know as much about it. Um, but it's sort of zero or one, so kind of on or off. And then 
the password. Okay, so this bike is actually locked. You would use the up and down or the plus and minus keys to enter a password and then hit I. And then that would let you change the wheel diameter. So right now we have 26 inch wheels on there, but you know, you might change those or depending on what bike this display is mounted to, it would have different sized wheels. And then after that, there is a top speed adjustment. So you could actually lower that if you're someone who's a little bit less comfortable with the 20 mile per hour that we see here in the United States, 32 kilometers per hour. Um, or you could potentially raise it, but in doing so, sometimes that can burn out the motors a little bit more quickly. And of course, it's gonna draw power on the battery more quickly as well. So there's, there's a lot of considerations there, and I don't actually have the password for this bike. This company just kind of keeps it locked. I think maybe unless you ask specifically so that you can you know, adjust it for yourself. Um, I do have more information on this back in the Electric Bike Review forums, and I've scanned the uh, manual that came with this bike, so give you some more feedback. I hope that helps. Have fun out there, and ride safe.